Hi guys, Danielle here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the books that I want to read in September. So I want to start this video off by talking about kind of like a big milestone for me, I suppose, and that is the fact that I started finally physical reading again. It has been so, so, so long since I have been able to physically read a book. I'm not even remotely exaggerating when I say that. I have struggled and struggled and struggled to pick up a book physically ever since I started audiobooking. So recently on my TikTok one day, I decided to go live while reading because I figured, you know, if people wanted to pop in and out, they could. I didn't expect people to stick around or watch because I figured it would probably be boring. But it was good for me because I couldn't use my phone as a distraction because it was live streaming. I couldn't scroll through TikTok or go through my notifications on Instagram. And I was kind of forced to finally sit down and read. And then to my surprise, people stuck around and read with me, which was amazing. And so now I've been doing it just basically every single night and this past week alone I have read four physical books. Four. <laughs> it's insane. I literally can read now. I, I know that's crazy but like I legitimately was so used to audiobooking that I just could not focus on a physical book and it feels so good to be back in it. So yeah that is uh, essentially the good news that I wanted to share with you, but today, as I said, we're going to be talking about the books that I want to pick up in September. So let's get started. So August was a pretty decently packed month for me in terms of how many books I read, which you will be seeing or have seen in my August wrap-up, depending upon when it goes up. One of the ways that I've actually been reading more as well is to not set too many goals or to put limitations on myself. When I used to form my TBRs, I would kind of lay out all of the books that I wanted to read, and now I'm kind of starting to diminish that number of books and just start reading whatever I want to. So I've been setting a smaller TBR of things to get through, and I've also not been making it a set TBR. So I'm like, well, these are the books that I want to get to this month but they're not the books necessarily that I will get to, which is kind of fun for me and I think fun for you too because you can kind of see what I want to read and then you can see in my wrap up what I ended up reading. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the books that I want to read in September. Okay, so we're going to start off with a book that I wanted to get to in September and already started and am already mostly through again because of those live streams where I physically read and it's just been immaculate, immaculate. I feel like reading a book physically is such a different experience than audiobooking and I forgot how fun it was to make up everything in my head, you know, instead of just like listening to someone tell it. I still love audiobooks, but I missed, missed, missed physical reading. So the first book that I wanted to get to in September, which I'm pretty certain I'll be finishing today, is The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. I randomly, randomly, randomly discovered this book. I was visiting my friend Crystal, we hadn't seen each other in a while, and we decided to get lunch together and stop at the bookstore, and I saw this book just minding its own business, laying on the table. It was, you know, golden and mesmerizing and beautiful, and I was like, okay, okay, well, I have to pick this up now, what's this about? As soon as I read that description, I was like, oh, well, oh, yeah. Great, now I gotta buy it. Um, so, this book was an instant buy for me. One, the cover is stunning, but two, the synopsis is so freaking cool. So, essentially, this book takes place on an island, and on this island there are witches and there is a witch queen. So, every year the witch queen has to take a handsome young boy from the island because she then has to bring him back to the palace where ultimately he will be sacrificed in order to save the island because the sacrifices are supposed to stop the island from sinking, which is a long-term agreement that was made between the islanders and the witches at the time. So this book follows a girl named Lena, and Lena is terrified that her brother is going to be taken this year. So Lena enlists the help of her childhood crush, Thomas, to help her stop her brother from being taken. Now Thomas was actually taken the year before and escaped. And he escaped because the previous witch queen fell in love with him and sacrificed herself instead. So this year, Lena is hoping her brother isn't taken and enlists Thomas' help, but instead, Thomas is taken. Lena is devastated and chases after him and volunteers in his stead. 
if that wasn't enough, then the Witch Queen actually falls in love with Lena. I'm halfway through. It's already intense. I am loving the characters. I'm loving the world building. And I'm just really anxious to see where this is going to go because it's already broken my heart a few times and I'm only halfway through. We're going to see where it goes. But this is the first book that's on my September TBR. And as I said, I'm already a good portion of the way through. So I will definitely be wrapping this one up for you at the end of September and you'll get to see more of my thoughts. But yeah. The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. First book. The next book on my September TBR is no surprise to anyone who knows me, and that is The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare. This book just came out. I'm so excited. I absolutely loved The Red Scrolls of Magic. If you haven't heard of The Red Scrolls of Magic or The Lost Book of the White, again, Red Scrolls of Magic is the first one, and it follows two characters from the Mortal Instruments series, and that is Magnus Bane and Alec Lightwood, and it takes place right after City of Glass and right before City of Fallen Angels and essentially it is Alec and Magnus going on a vacation together when some things go awry in Paris because of a demon cult and some other miscellaneous things that the two must face. It is so so good. What Cassandra Clare does so well is characters specifically. Like her characters, she could write them in any time period, write them doing just about anything, and to me and probably most people it'll be interesting, it'll be fascinating, it'll be worth a read. I love Alec and Magnus. They are my two favorite characters in the Mortal Instruments. They're my favorite couple. I absolutely love that we get more of them and more of them together and I cannot wait cannot wait to get to the Lost Book of the White. I'm actually expecting to start reading this as soon as I finish The Dark Tide, so hopefully by tomorrow I'll be starting to read this and I am so excited! Yes, Lost Book of the White, second book on my September TBR. Okay, so the next book on my September TBR is one that I am so, 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 so excited about. It is Now That I Found You by Christina Forrest. First of all, look at this cover. Look at how stunning it is. I love the cover and I love the colors. I love the cover and the colors. I got a little befuddled there. Also, I just am vibing with this art style for covers now. I can't explain it, but it's it's like people that are art on the covers. You, yeah. You know what I meant. I am vibing with this. I never really liked people on the cover before because I like to visualize people the way I want to, but this style specifically is my favorite. My favorite. I don't like actual real pictures of people on the cover, but the pictures on the cover of people that are art? Okay, I am done explaining. You know what I mean. I like this art style. Okay, so this book follows Evie Jones, and Evie Jones is basically this big Hollywood star on the rise. She is poised to be the next big thing following in the footsteps of her really uber famous grandmother until one of her best friends betrays her and she ends up getting blacklisted from Hollywood because of the secret her friend revealed or the sabotage that her friend caused. But Evie knows just the way to save her career and that is a public appearance with America's most love star, and that is her grandmother. However, her grandmother has been kind of a recluse and has been hiding in the shadows for 20 years, and just as Gigi is going to present her with an honorary award, her grandmother Gigi goes missing. So, with time running out, Evie has to enlist the help of Milo, and Milo is a pretty popular musician that was the last person to ever see her grandmother, and the two of them have to go on a manhunt in New York City to try and find her before time runs out, and of course adventure and romance ensue, and a lot of self-discovery. So I'm so excited, so, so, so excited about this book. When I heard about the synopsis of this, I was like, oh my goodness, I am ready for two people to pretend they dislike each other and to, you know, inevitably fall in love with each other, but I'm so, 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 so excited cannot wait and yeah look forward to seeing it in my September wrap-up. Okay so as I said I am keeping my TBR a little bit brief so that I don't overwhelm myself and I actually read all the books on my TBR. So the next and the last book that is on my September TBR is The Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This was another one of those books that I picked up on a whim at Barnes & Noble. This cover blew me away literally blew me away. And then when I opened the dust jacket and learned what it was about, it was instantly in my cart. 
look how stunning this is. This is also the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, so look at how stunning this cover is underneath. I am obsessed. What a selling point, honestly. It doesn't even need anything to sell it. Honestly, the synopsis is enough. It's beautiful. So this is what it is about. So essentially this book follows Yadriel and Yadriel summons a ghost and cannot get rid of him. So as I said, it follows Yadriel and it follows him and his journey. He is from a very traditional Latinx family and they are having trouble accepting his gender. He is determined to prove himself and with the help of his best friend and his cousin, they perform a ritual to bring back the ghost of his murdered cousin Miguel and set him free. But instead of summoning his cousin, he accidentally summons the resident bad boy from his school, Julian. And Julian comes along and decides instead of going back that he wants to tie up some loose ends while he's here. Yadriel cannot get rid of him and feels like he has no choice, so they decide to help each other. But as things move along, Yadriel realizes that he doesn't want to let go of Julian. This book sounds so freaking good and it's like nothing that I've really ever heard of before so I'm excited about that aspect as well because it feels very refreshing. Some of the topics that are going to be discussed in this book are LGBTQ plus acceptance, colonization, deportation, and racism. I am very very excited about this book. I'm excited about the topics that are going to be discussed. I'm excited about the characters. I'm excited about the really, really unique storyline, and I just cannot wait to start it. This is one of those books that I casually picked up because uh, the cover absolutely caught my eye. And then when I read more about it, and I read more about what it was going to be about, and about the author, I was thrilled. I was absolutely thrilled, and I cannot wait to start reading this book. So that is it for the books that I want to get to in September. I am so 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 excited to start. I've already started but I'm so excited to continue getting through this TBR and there will of course be some other books as well that I will be getting to and you'll have to check that out in my September wrap-up but I'm very very excited. I cannot wait to share with you how I felt about these books, how I feel about these books and yeah. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye, guys! Bye.